When Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is, one of the popular answers was John the Baptist. Today, in anticipation of the memorial of the Baptist's martyrdom, we shall reflect on his life. Who was this man? Why does he remain relevant to us, especially to the laity? Aside from the Lord Jesus and the Blessed Mother, John the Baptist is the only saint whom we commemorate liturgically more than once in a year. First is to celebrate his birth on June 24th, and second is to mark his death or martyrdom on August the 29th. This is a tribute to his role in the history of our salvation. For as the Lord himself said, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John. His conception and birth was a miracle, a gift from God to his pious parents, Zechariah and Elizabeth, who were past the childbearing age. She was also barren. In accordance with the prophecy, his parents named him John, which means God is gracious. From the very beginning, God was at work in his life. Oftentimes, the words from Isaiah are used as a reference to him. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He formed me in the womb to be his servant. This verse suits John, for all his life was dedicated preparing the people for the coming of the Messiah. He was the precursor or forerunner of Jesus Christ. He was the voice crying out from the wilderness, calling people to repent and be baptized. He was the one who identified to us who Jesus was. Ecce Agnus Dei, behold the Lamb of God. This aspect of John's life reminds me of our dear catechists, especially the lay catechists, whose number we hope would increase. Friends, the catechists are the ones who provide basic religious instructions to catechumens, to possible converts, and to the baptized. They guide them towards the Christian faith especially as they approach the sacraments, the vessels of God's grace. They also lead the baptized in the deepening of their knowledge and practice of the faith. There are five characteristics of John the Baptist that the catechists should emulate. First, he was filled with joy in the presence of the Lord. Even from his mother's womb, he leapt for joy at the sound of Mary's greetings when she visited Elizabeth. Pope Francis reminds us in Evangelii Gaudium to savor the joy of the gospel, for only through this joy will we be able to effectively bring it to others, as St. John did. Second, he was a person of prayer. Recall how the disciples asked Jesus, Teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Friends, do we still pray? Do we lead others to the ways of prayer? Pope Francis teaches us, prayer is opening the door to the Lord so that he will come. Third, he was humble. We see that in his lifestyle and in his manner, this is encapsulated in his words, he must increase, I must decrease. We do not do our work to promote ourselves, but to make Jesus, his gospel, and his salvation known to all. Fourth, he acknowledged his human frailty and limitations. We remember the scene in his prison cell from where he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one who is to come? In the darkness that enveloped his mission, he desired to be confirmed in faith. Like John, let us ask the Lord, what is your plan for me? What do you want me to do for you? Fifth, he remained steadfast in the truth. It is worth 
noting that he was not asked to deny the truth, but to stop speaking about it. But he did not, and he was executed for it. How is our commitment to the truth? Are we easily intimidated by the enemies of truth? The CBCP asks us to choose to be brave, for we are called to be saints and sent forth as heroes like John the Baptist. So there you go, my dear brothers and sisters. Our dear catechists, I pray that the Lord will increase your faith and grant you courage to live out the faith you teach. I am inviting those who have the time, the talent, and the interest to pass on the faith. Join the catechetical ministry of your parish. St. John the Baptist, pray for us.